So, after giving it a lot of thought over the past few months, I finally decided to get myself a drill press. So, this is the Ozito drill press. Uh, it's a 350 watt machine, 13 millimeter standard chuck, and it's got five speeds. Um, it's a budget, uh, sort of entry level product. It's, uh, it retails for around about hundred pounds. Um, I got it on discount, so I got it for just under 80. So, perfect time to get it. And it also comes with a three year warranty, which is pretty good. So um, I'm gonna open this up, get it set up and uh, give it a test. Let's see what it's like. Okay, so far so good. Nothing seems to be damaged in there. This, uh, the chuck box has got a hole in it, so I didn't need to check that. But um, I think that's just the chuck key that's poked out. So yeah, chuck looks fine as well. Um, so yeah, good start, nothing's damaged. Um, heard a lot of stories about these cheaper tools where quality control is not as great. A lot of things arriving with dents in them or cracks. But uh, so far so good. So let's get this thing set up. Okay, so I've got rid of all the packaging and uh, the assembly, according to this, is only about nine steps. So um, it shouldn't be too long to get this up and running. So let's get started. Um, it does come with a couple of Allen keys. So um, yeah, hopefully this is all that we need, but um, I'm sure we'll probably need a, a spanner or something just to get everything tightened up. Right, so we need to start by attaching the pillar to the base. So you need a, a 12mm um, spanner to tighten these bolts. This, uh, this pole has come pre-greased, so it's a bit messy. So keep the tissue close around. Don't wear gloves. I actually quite like this. Um, it's one of the things I liked about this one is that it's very easy to turn this because of the way this this handle rotates. So even if you've got this up against the wall, you can kind of flip this handle back and forth to avoid hitting the wall, which is something I quite like. So I think I'm going to I'm going to end up having this quite close to a wall on where I set it up. There's no, there's no way to align these things. So it looks like you just need to eyeball it and test it, but it looks reasonably straight. And then it's just a couple of Allen keys to tighten the place. machine comes with three handles. Um, a lot of people have said that it's best to just keep one on there because then you know exactly which one to hold. When you've got three, <clears throat> when you've got three, sometimes you end up starting your drill by holding the wrong one and then you have to maybe readjust your grip. So I'll put all three on for now, but um, I may end up just having one in the end. So if you end up start if you start your drilling with by holding this handle then you have to kind of rotate your arm all the way around. So 
particularly to remember to pick the top one, or probably the back one is the best when you get full full distance of movement in one go without having to go around on yourself. So I might end up removing these two or maybe just put a sticker on them or something. But now the chuck. So what it says here is to retract the the claws, the teeth of the chuck, so they're all the way in. Place a bit of wood on the table, position the chuck, and then lay, lower it, uh, lower the pillar down to sort of squeeze the chuck into place. Okay. So, there we go. Just press it down a bit. So one of the good things about this machine is uh, these pulleys are actually metal. A lot of the cheaper machines have plastic pulleys. Um, so hopefully this will last a bit longer than some of its cheaper counterparts. Uh, it's currently set on the middle speed, so I'll leave it where it is for now. Test it on the middle speed, but I'll probably end up using it on the slower speed uh, for most of my operations. Okay, makes it easier. You don't have to open the screw. And that's it, it's all uh, assembled. I'm sweating here. It gets really hot in my shed. Um, so that's it, that was pretty quick to assemble. It took me, I don't know, about 15 minutes. And um, now let's fire it up and see if it's any good. Actually, one more thing uh, I should mention is that this table can be tilted 45 degrees either way. So to do that, there's actually a bolt underneath. So there's no quick release for that need to uh, loosen this bolt it's got a guide on here but i don't know how accurate that guide is so i would just use a level or a digital level if you've got one um i've got one which i need to dig out just to make sure this table is completely on zero before i start drilling so i'll start by zeroing my digital level to my table let's try that again And then we can see that this table is ever so slightly off um, flat, but I think that's a small enough error to live with. So I'll leave it how it is for now. I may come back and give it a fine adjustment a bit later just to make it perfectly zero, depending on where I end up putting the draw press in the end, because it's not going to stay on the table. Okay, so I've installed my draw bit, tightened up the chuck. I'm going to leave the, the guard this plastic guard off for now just so I think it's a bit more visible and um, let's try it out so just a scrap of um, pallet wood so obviously not the best wood in the world it's uh, if it gets a clean hole in this it should get a clean hole in something better as well Hole on the obviously on the front outside is uh, nice and clean. I've got some tear out on the back, but then you know when you were using this for something, you know when you're using this properly, you would put uh, a piece of scrap underneath to uh, prevent that tear out. But the hole is nice and clean, so uh, let's give this a try with a few other drill bits. I mainly want to try this with some Forstner bits and um, see how clean that hole comes out. The drill has this integrated depth indicator. It's um, analog, you know, it's fit, well, it's set to zero now. Um, I wouldn't say it's the most accurate thing in the world. So I've set it to uh, just under three centimeters, 30, mill 30 millimeters. And um, I've got a piece of scrap underneath my Forstner bit. This is a 40 millimeter Forstner bit. It's the largest one that I have currently. Um, so let's see how it 
uh, cuts with this. Didn't actually make it all the way through. There's a slight bit left on there, but if you just um, break that bit off, see the inside of the cut is uh, nice and smooth. These these bits are pretty new, but yeah, that was um, fairly easy. I think a slightly slower speed would be better. Uh, forcing the bits to make a lot of mess, so I'll have to come up with some sort of attachment for my vacuum later on. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty happy with that. So there we have it, that's an unboxing and a first test of this Zito 5-speed pillar drill. Like I said, it is an entry-level DIY product and it retails for around about £100. I think for my needs so far it's going to be perfect. Um, I've just got a small setup here and um, this will be a nice addition to get some nice clean holes in my, in my wood. Uh, like I said, you know, this was just a piece of scrap pallet wood and um, the hole came out pretty nice. This is the tear-out end and the front side came out nice and clean and um, I'm really happy with that. So I need to do a few things to get it all set up, find a permanent home for it, maybe uh, find a way of attaching my vacuum hose to it and um, get some scraps of wood to permanently attach to this base, I think, or at least something close by that I can clamp on. I may even pick up a, uh, a pillar drill vise to stick on the top of the all. So if you enjoyed this video, this uh, unboxing and first look at the Zito, then um, hit subscribe and hit the notification bell, hit the like button as well. And uh, the best thing you can do is share this with your friends as well. Um, check me out on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever else. There's some links in the description below. And um, I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.